Seth Rogen and James Franco are a dynamic duo. The two share a long history together, which started all the way back from 1999 up until Zeroville, which came out in 2019. The two share a relationship that goes beyond their professional career, since it's common knowledge that the two are friends on and off the set. However, in a recent turn of events, largely on the side of Franco, it would seem that the relationship of the two would now be put to the test. As lawsuits are filed and controversies start to pop up, it may be a matter of time before the two go their separate ways, not just as business partners, but as friends. In this video, we'll be discussing why Seth Rogen would no longer be working with James Franco. Before we get into it, thumbs up to show your support, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. That way you never miss out on future updates. This entire issue actually started with issues that surrounded James Franco, specifically on the allegations of sexual misconduct. The issue started in 2014, when Franco allegedly contacted a 17-year-old girl from Scotland and lured her to a hotel during her stay in New York. Franco initially denied that any of that happened despite actual screenshots surfacing from their conversation. Later on, however, he admitted that he indeed had the conversation and commented that it was poor judgment on his part. Seth Rogen decided to find humor in the incident when he was invited to the show Saturday Night Live. In his opening monologue, he jokes that he was in fact the underage girl that Franco conversed with and that he wanted to know whether the actor would be faced with the fact that he was underage. The joke garnered some laughs even from James Franco himself. The joke, however, would not age well as things with Franco continued to get more and more complicated. After winning a Golden Globe Award, three women posted a tweet citing Franco's sexual misconduct, first of whom was Ali Sheedy, where she expresses surprise to the actor winning the award while also hinting that he may be the reason why she quit acting altogether. The tweet, however, was deleted not soon after. The second woman to post a tweet was Sarah Tither Kaplan, who expressed that she loves and respects Franco but that does not mean that she would not hold him accountable for his past mistakes. Lastly, the third tweet came from Violet Paley who was a little bolder with her message. She tweeted, quote, cute, hashtag time's up, pin James Franco. Remember the time you pushed my head down in a car towards your exposed ass? And that other time you told my friend to come to your hotel when she was 17, after you had already been caught doing that to a different 17-year-old, end quote. When asked to respond about it, Franco merely supported the women's action of coming forward, but he explained he was a bit confused as to what the women were talking about. He states that the events that took place in the past had a little bit differently from how he remembered it. The allegations, however, didn't stop there, as five more other women came forward and accused Franco of taking advantage of them sexually. This was in reference to Franco's acting and filmmaking class, Studio 4. The women claimed that the actor, along with his other male colleagues, took advantage of their position by encouraging the women to perform sexual scenes for the purpose of getting roles or in practice for some of Franco's projects. A lawsuit was filed against the actor and some of his business partners. It's worth noting that even up to this point, Seth Rogen still claimed that he's still willing to work with Franco. Recently, however, he's had a change of heart, and that's most likely because of another actress, Charlene Yee. Charlene Yee is a rising star who's been featured in several films, TV series, and animated shows such as the fan favorite We Bear Bears. Yee got to meet Rogen in the making of the 2007 comedy movie Knocked Up and got to work with him again in the 2017 film, Disaster Artist. Everything took a 180-degree turn when Yi suddenly opened up about her experience in the set and how she wanted to exit the project. She continues on to say that she wanted to break legal contract because James Franco was a sexual predator, and when producers learned of her intent on leaving, they tried to bribe her. She said, quote, When I tried to break legal contract and quit Disaster Artist because James Franco was a sexual predator, they tried to bribe me with a bigger acting role. I cried and told them that this was the exact opposite of what I wanted, that I didn't feel safe working with a f***ing sexual predator. She continues on to say that Seth Rogen, being one of the producers of the movie and a friend to Franco, was an enabler. He apparently dismissed the allegations and complaints about Franco's sexual inappropriate behavior and has so far done nothing to address the situation. Because of the heat that the story was picking up, Rogen was quick to respond and act on Yee's claims. In May of this year, Rogan released a statement saying that he will no longer be working with James Franco. He says to the Times, quote, What I can say is that I despise abuse and harassment, and I would never cover up or conceal the actions of someone doing it, or knowingly put someone in a situation where they were around someone like that. However, I do look back at a joke I made on Saturday Night Live in 2014, and I very much regret making that joke, 
It was a terrible joke, honestly." End quote. Rogan admits that his decision to cut business ties with Franco wasn't a coincidence and that it was largely influenced by the allegations and lawsuits that he faced in the past years. Him working with Franco has also affected not just his career, but his personal life as well, especially with celebrities like Yee publicly condemning his actions. After the news of Rogan distancing himself from Franco, Yee responds by posting a checklist of what Rogan should now do in order to make up for his role in the misconduct. This includes apologizing to the women who were victimized by Franco, self-education towards abuse, and any other sort, and a commitment to protect and care for survivors. He further states that Rogan's actions, or lack thereof, potentially, quote, caused denial, loss of reality, loss of intuition to protect self from future abusers, lifelong health issues, and or attempt in suicide, end quote. This was, of course, in reference to sexual abuse victims. There has been no recent response from Rogan's side in regards to Yee's post, but it may be safe to assume that it's something that the public also wants from the actor. There is no denying that Franco's actions in the past several years did not only affect his own life and career, but the lives of those who came forward as well as those who supported him. As of now, Rogan's statement stands that he will no longer be working with James Franco in future projects, possibly in hopes of preserving his own career and public image. Will these recent events change the unacceptable behavior of the actors involved? Only time will tell. What are your thoughts about this entire ordeal? Let us know in the comments section below. Then give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Until next time!